Hey everyone, today we're going to make a trip out to Tacopa, California. It's about 90 miles south and uh, west of Las Vegas. And uh, this is going to be my intro to episode number two. I'd already gone out there one time before and made a first episode showing mainly the interior of the mines up there. And we're going to go uh, do some history and search and look at the uh, mines that uh, made up the Tacopa mines. Those mines are known as Gunsight, Noonday, Columbia, and the War Eagle. So we're going to head out there today. We'll check it out. And as usual, I got my uh, to-go coffee. It should set me up for the morning drive. And we'll go out there and shoot some video and let's go explore. It is said that Native Americans populated the area for at least 10,000 years. The Southern Paiute inhabited the Shoshone and Tacopa area when the first white men arrived. It is recorded in history in 1829, Antonio Armillo, trading Santa Fe, Serapis, and blankets for California horses and mules, passed through Resting Spring and Tacopa along the Old Spanish Trail. Also, John Fremont and the renowned mountain man and scout Kit Carson passed through this area in the 1840s. In 1875, the first of the Tacopa mines was discovered by the Brown brothers, followed by an entrepreneur by the name of Jonas Osborne. He created numerous schemes that failed to make the mines profitable and unprofitable operations closed the mines in 1881. And then in 1906, the Tacopa Consolidated Mining Company was formed and obtained control of a series of mines and claims collectively known as the Tacopa Mines. After building a railroad and finding a reputable mining manager, the Tacopa Mines prospered until closing in 1928. The mine sat idle until about 1940, when a series of mining companies reopened several of the mines, and those operations continued until 1957. With all the traffic along the Old Spanish Trail, it wasn't until 1875 that a documented discovery of the mines occurred. There is an uncorroborated story that during the early days of the Old Spanish Trail, there was a gun barrel wedged in a tree and pointing towards the area of the Gunsight Mine. The storyline is the earlier travelers would sight down the barrel to locate the area of future Gunsight Mine and go get some high-grade lead ore if they needed it. Sometime late in 1875, a gentleman by the name of Jonas P. Osborne arrived from Eureka, Nevada, where he was a mining superintendent. He liked the quality of the ore in the Resting Springs Mining District, so he bought an interest in several of the Brown Brothers' claims and moved into the original town site of Tacopa. By August of 1878, Tacopa had a population of approximately 200 people, three saloons, three mercantile stores, a boarding house, a stable, a post office, and living quarters consisting of adobes, tents, and any other means of shelter. He soon realized that to make the mines profitable, some method for concentrating the ore near the mines would be necessary. The vast majority of the ore was not of high enough grade of lead and silver to pay 
or transportation cost to a distant smelter. In 1876, Osborne built a small furnace and experimented with ways to cut costs. He had convinced himself that he had devised a smelting process that would economically concentrate the bulk ore. So he set out to gather capital so he could build a large-scale smelter. He was able to raise enough money to move forward and actually go through with building the smelter. By January of 1878, the smelting furnace was ready for operation. During 1878, Osborne's smelter proved to be a complete failure. There were many problems, including requiring an excessive amount of manpower to operate it, and no reliable source of water, to name a few. Osborne then convinced the companies to invest in a new device known as the Davis Pulverizer, which was a rotary mill. Osborne decided to move the pul pulverizer near Resting Spring. That area that you see over there in the distance with the trees is known as Rest Resting Springs Ranch. Its time goes clear back into the early 1800s when Kit Carson supposedly came through this area in the old Spanish Trail. It also served as a town site for surrounding mines back in the late 1880s and early 1900s. You can't go over there anymore today because it's a private ranch, so it's not open to roam around freely like we used to be able to do so. From here, I turned and went east up into the mountains and uh, started to roam around out there at the Gunsight Mine. And along the way, the trail up to the mine site, you can see remnants of the old rail bed and some of the wooden ties. Once I got up to the site, I turned and looked west at this fantastic panoramic view. Way out in the distance, that farthest peak is Telescope Peak in Death Valley. This is the first structure I ran across uh, up here at the Gunsight Mine. Originally, I thought it was a miner's cabin, but it was built way too well to be just that. So I think it has something to do with the uh, tramway that went up to the top of the hill. You can see in this particular photo the path, or what appears to be the path, and must have been some kind of a foundation for the tram. This is the inside of that building. You can see the heavy timbers. Behind me there, you can see the mine portal into the Gunsight mine. If you look real closely, there's a section of it that you can actually see some rail ties. That's where the uh, ore carts. And what they'll do is push those ore carts out over this level area here and off the edge there into the uh, ore bin. Here is a photo from 1916 that shows the same immediate area with the mules hauling out the ore carts.
I wanted to switch over and talk about the noonday mine now. For starters, you can see the old uh, rail alignment that uh, once came from the Tonopan Tidewater up to the noonday site. This railroad was completed sometime in 1910 at a cost of $200,000, which is equivalent to about $6 million in today's dollars. The Tacopa Railroad had but one locomotive, and that was specially made to negotiate the unusually steep grades. The mines worked steadily for 16 years from 1912 to 1928 and yield three million dollars in silver and lead. That's equivalent to over 55 million in today's dollars. In that year, 1928, the mines and the railroad both closed. The rails were taken up and sold for scrap in 1938. The locomotive sat idle down in Tacopa till about 1942, and then the um, Santa Fe Railroad scrapped it in Barstow in 1946. This is a photo of the gravity tram from the Noonday Mine, stated 1916. And this is a photo roughly of the same area, showing the same gravity tram, but much of it is already destroyed or deteriorated over time. This photo is meant to kind of give you an idea how steep 6.6% grade is. That was an unheard of grade for any rails at that time. This is a photo of the ore trussle that went out of the Noonday Mine and over to the Grant Mine. As I walk through this mine site, I'm kind of uh, reminded of how crazy it must have been these folks who lived a hard life and uh, you can kind of see the conditions that they lived in they didn't have any electricity they didn't have any heat it was really cold in the winter time and it was really hot in the summer but you can see the little dugouts right behind me that was probably in the early days. I think from what I'm reading, this area had about uh, three separate mining booms. One started uh, during the discovery in the late 1880s, and then I believe a, a big effort to reclaim lead and silver was right around the turn of the century and up until the 1920s. And then during the depression, this area just went completely dormant and then it got reactivated in 1947 by a major mining firm and they operated again until like 1957 and then it's laid dormant ever since. It's great to walk around and see these old sites and kind of get an idea and a sense of what they experienced. You know, I'm out here right now in the solitude and the quiet. But most of these areas, I'm sure, were extremely noisy with all the mining operation going on. Now, these cabins right here are probably far enough away from the, from the actual mill and mining noise, so they might have been okay. I suspect these were from the, the first mining era. But uh, we'll go take a look, closer look at them check it out. Here's a rock foundation that I ran across over here. Probably one of the older ones back in the day. You can see the uh, what looked like was a fireplace and probably a cook stove on top. But you can see the local stones that they took. Helped them shelter from the wind. The wind during the spring times and the months is always cold and windy out in the deserts around here. You can see all the wood that was probably in the front part of the house and some of the structure, some of the, perhaps it even extended out into this area right here. This is some aerial photo of the remnants of uh, structures that were nearby the actual mine. I believe they were related to maybe the superintendents and those folks that were 
responsible for operation of the noonday mine. You can see the concrete slabs and some of the debris left behind. Married Man's Camp was built upon the original site of the Tacopa town site, and uh, it was built by Finley and Company in 1946 and was torn down in 1978. It was also known by the names of Lower Noonday Camp, Mill Camp, and Noonday City. Next to the Married Man's Camp, there's a bunch of ore debris from the mill. This mill, located near Married Man's Camp, is the fifth known approach to concentrating lower grade ore in the long history of the Tacopa mines. It began operation in late 1947. It was shut down from September of 48 to July of 49. It reopened soon after that in 1949 when a new vein was discovered in the War Eagle mine. The mill continued operation until 1957 when the War Eagle mine closed permanently. Here I am in the Mojave Desert, staying the night up near Tacopa, California. I got so much information to gather that I wanted to stay the night so I can get an early start tomorrow. Stick with me and we'll go exploring. Thanks for watching.